Hello, me again. Now then, crochet hooks. Right, where do we begin with crochet hooks? Now, um, to begin with, most people in, uh, get a little metal hook. Let's show you. This is, this is just a, a miniature emergency travel kit that I've got. Uh, they look like this kind of thing. They're all right. They'll, they'll get you going. Uh, but as you move on, um, sometimes they, they have this this kind this bit here is usually in the middle of your hook, uh, and it can make your your thumb and finger a bit sore because you know obviously it's a metal groove work you know in your fingers. So as you move on through your journey, you might buy yourself some really nice crochet hooks, and I have a selection here. Now this is the Clover and More uh, range. Um, I usually buy one at a time when I'm ordering something on the internet. Uh, they between five and seven pounds each, so they they're not the cheapest, but trust me, they are the thing. When you when you crochet, they really do. Um, they're very smooth, very smooth on the fingers. As you can see, it's there's a, a nice sort of plastic, soft coating to them. And they make working with wool so much easier. Uh, and it, it, the design of the hook as well. There's there's all technical names for each bit of the hook here. Yeah, even I don't go there. So this one is, as we were saying before, you size four millimeter. This is the four millimeter. Uh, they're all different colours, uh, so that you can, if you're visually impaired, you know which one it is by. The colour of the uh, thing, what you can just see here, right? So the G, uh, that's an American size. Uh, four millimeter is the universal UK and European sizing, uh, and then obviously this is the brand here. Uh, now then, as I was explaining with knitting, this is your standard double knitting hook. Um, if I was doing something like making uh, one of your, your grandma's old-fashioned oilies, okay, everybody knows about them, uh, you use a very fine wool and a very, very, very fine hook. I, you'll just see, I took um, a cover off this, like so, because they're very sharp. Um, it is a hook and it's intended to manipulate wool. But if you sit on that, you're having a trip to A&E because it's like a fishing hook, it won't come out. So that is why they have the little cover on, so that you don't sit on it or punch yourself with it um, and to keep it safe. And because, I mean, obviously it is thin, it is only wire, it will bend. You can bend these and snap them and you really don't want to do that because, you know, they're not, they're not the cheapest hooks. But if you're doing it, just buy one at a time and treat yourself and they're really, really, they're lovely to work with. So that's um, that's the smallest one I've got. That's the 1.25. Then there's half sizes in between. Oh, this is a one. So that's a little bit, little bit smaller than that one. So that's that. Pop that cover back on. So that's a one. Uh, there's a lot of sizes between one and two because these are the ones that you use for you crochet and fine lace, um, which I'm trying to master, but I'm so used to using a thicker yarn that I really do find it fiddly, and it, you need a lot of concentration um, because you, you're counting stitches all the time and putting a different stitch in. And basically, crochet, you use the same stitches, it's just where you put the stitch that makes the pattern. Uh, all will become clear in the fullness of time. So, right, so we've got a one, we've got a two, just getting a little bit fatter, a three, favourite one, four. Uh, I have a few of these because I'm uh, I'm very good at losing them, so and I sort of get a bit panicky if I can't find my four millimetre hook. Then we've got um, a five, that one, it's a five, and again, a six. Now you'd be using your six for chunky. 
Um, so that's that. So basically it's the same same principle as wool. You know, the finer the hook, the finer the wool that you use, the finer the, the thicker the hook, uh, then you're working up through your super chunky and t-shirt yarns. Um, crochet, oh, crochet is wonderful. Uh, it grows a lot faster than uh, knitting. Um, and people will always say, when you're sitting there, quietly crocheting, or see you knitting, and eventually you'll learn not to want to strangle them, because, you know, they can't help it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's lovely, it's, it's a very portable craft. Um, it's always knitting, really, but uh, I tend to, I like to crochet, that's just, you know, just what I do. You can just see in the background there, can you see the... The cushion, that one there, so this 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 one next to the little dog, uh, that's a, a cushion cover that I crocheted from a, a pattern, and the uh, the cushion next to it, the VW camper van, is uh, one that a friend knitted me for me for a big birthday, and she very kindly made me that, and it's beautiful, absolutely love it, um, and that's a, a type of knitting that um, you know as you become proficient. You can have a go, you can make something as beautiful as either of those two things. Uh, cushions are nice to make because they're, they're just a nice size and, you know, you're not doing it forever. Whereas you're making a blanket, you can be um, three, four weeks. I've just finished one that took me over two years because basically I started it and fell out with it and didn't <laughs> got to a stitch I didn't know how to do. Anyway, I've mastered it. Um, so that's that's been finished. Uh, but yeah, it's um, they're lovely. It's lovely, you know. I mean, um, crochets had a very, very big renaissance lately, um, and particularly during the uh, the lockdown um, time. It, the um, I'll mention this this name of this these people because they are absolutely wonderful. There's a firm called Wool Warehouse. You find them on the internet. They have a fantastic website store uh, where you can shop online. And last year it was taking three to four weeks to send out a delivery that normally you'll get within two or three days because everybody was wanting to, you know, what else can we do? Let's get some wool, let's make a blanket, let's do what, you know, let's follow this uh, crochet along or knit along on um, Facebook and what have you. So you just couldn't get it. You couldn't get hooks, you couldn't get needles, you couldn't get it. So fortunately I got quite a bit of wool that I could use and... You know, I mean, you don't have to use the colours that they say in the pattern. You can make it up as you go along. The blanket I showed you earlier in the uh, the one about wool. This is a crochet along that's currently been uh, advertised on Facebook on um, a blog called Attic24. Uh, I would thoroughly recommend you have a look at this lady. She's called Lucy. She's lovely. Uh, and this is one of her blankets that she's uh, designed but I'm doing this in colours that I've got. I've also I'm also doing the the one as it should be, but this is my take on her pattern. So we start off there, and then we go up here, and we go along, and that's as far as I've got. Uh, I've just got another couple of rows of uh, deep pinks and this beautiful proper purple to put in the middle, and then I'll go back and do all these colours in reverse to make up a size, a blanket that will be roughly um, single bed size. And uh, about, about six foot long. Um, so I'm doing that in between working on the uh, the instructions which are published every week. Um, but there's, there's the the beauty of Lucy's site is she doesn't just make blankets and she leaves the patterns there free. So, you know, you don't have to go out and buy an expensive pattern. You need the hook and the wool, fair enough. Uh, but you can you can have a go with anything you've got lying around. Um, the more you practice, the better you get. It's it's just as simple as that. Uh, you know, it's it's just practice, practice, practice. It's the same with knitting. It's the same with anything. And I think you've got to um, manage your expectations and 
you know, if there's a little mistake in it, you know it's there, but nobody else will know it's there. You can just go at your own pace. But please, if you want to take up crochet and you want to become proficient at it, then you've got to practice. Uh, I learned to crochet when I was about eight. I'll be honest, I'm 65 now. And it's only in the last nine years that I've really sort of upped my game. Um, because I thought, I, I just can't carry on making granny square, squares for the rest of my life. Um, have I got a granny square? I don't think I've got one up there. No, I haven't got one's hand. Um, so I've invested some time in it. And now it's what I do when I'm watching the television of an evening. Uh, or if I've got a quiet ten minutes, I can just sit down with me wool and... And just, or if I'm a bit bit stressed, I can work the stress out on that, on rattling off a few rows on my blanket. Um, but yeah, the, the benefits are, are absolutely enormous. It's good for you. It's it's good. Um, not I'm not say therapy, but it's therapeutic, um, and it it will calm you if, if you're feeling a bit anxious or stressed out or you just need something the movement and the rhythm that, that you form when you start crocheting and you get to know your stitches you will feel calmer within yourself um, and it's producing something beautiful even if you know nobody else likes it doesn't matter it's for you it's not for anybody else unless you're making a gift for somebody it's not for anybody it's for you and it's your time and it's that time that you need and you need if crochet is your thing there's other crafts you know there's there's paper crafts i'll show you show you another thing here right there you go they're little flowers and that's a japanese paper craft which uh they're quite interesting to me but as you can see from that it's wonky but it's still a beautiful flower <laughs> So yeah, you can uh, you can do it. There's anything you can do. You know, it's just mastering a particular skill, and then doing what you want to do with that skill that makes it fun. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you'll be able to join us on the uh, the Whitaker Wellbeing Day. That's on the thirtieth of January, twenty twenty one. I don't know what time we're going to be doing our uh, knit and natter session, and when we say knit, it's sort of a loose term for uh, fiber crafts uh, which can be crochet we have people making rugs um do all sorts up at weir uh, they're, they're lovely ladies and they're very very friendly and under normal circumstances we all meet together in a big room and um, we have lots of tea and coffee and cake and biscuits and things like that um and a lot of uh, very firm friendships have been made and you know we're all uh, doing something we enjoy doing so hopefully you'll be able to meet my friends, my buddies, and uh, we'll see you then. So I've really enjoyed making these videos for you and I hope you've enjoyed them too. Um, I'm on Facebook, um, Instagram. Not very, I'm not very frequent poster, but uh, you know, you can find me on there and, and I will put a little um, list of uh, groups on Facebook uh, to the whisker so that they can post a, a little I don't know, link or whatever uh, to groups that you can see and don't forget if you're struggling with a stitch go on youtube because the, there's people there who will actually video themselves doing a crochet a stitch don't watch too carefully how they hold the hook and how they hold the yarn you hold your hook and yarn in the way that's comfortable to you and the way that you can work it there's as many styles and ways of crocheting as there are breeds of dog. Everybody does it their way. So you just, just if anybody's got OCD, don't worry that you're not doing it right. You do it your way. That's another very important thing to remember. So I'll stop wittering and try and get these videos to uh, the Whittaker uh, for you to watch. So see you soon. Take care. Bye.